All right, man. So we're back, man. We took a, a little hiatus, um, but we're back at the Matt Strange store, man. We got uh, Coach B, Brian Navarro, with us today. Um, but yeah, man, we took a little break, man. It's been a minute, and you've been yeah. hella busy, bro. Yeah, I've been, you know, trying to get things right for this this year coming up. It's a lot of preparing, a lot of uh, a lot of strategizing, a lot of like trying to get my my music right, and you know, working on an album and trying to make it sound you know, better than the last. Yeah. So it's always it's always about elevating to, you know, the next oh, level. You're doing that, bro. You're doing that. And I think the last time we met was like in September, bro. You've had a, like a, a super busy October. I think I seen you, um, well, you did that show with Lil Rob. Yeah, yeah it was, was at the Novo in Los Angeles. It was, it was amazing, man. Um, when he invited me to come to it or actually, I was invited to just attend, you know, just to, to support but he asked me to you know do our song together so that was that was dope i got a chance to perform with him that was my first time performing with him um but that's one for the books that was yeah. my first time at the the novo uh, and then i have a show coming up next week at the los angeles or las vegas convention center in las vegas yeah man so first I, time performing in las vegas so talk about that bro because i've seen the lineup bro and, and it's it's dope to see that lineup and then see you in it because it's like you got kid frost Delinquent yeah. Habits, Warren G, Sugar Free, and it's and like you're in the middle yeah. of that lineup, so you're uh, like performing in between them, like yeah. So I'm I'm excited because, um, like I was telling you, this is this is my first show since like COVID, like like you know my own show. So, um, so to have my own set and and to be able to come back and perform at the convention center yeah. is gonna be a way to come back. Have you performed in Vegas before? Or this is like no, it's my first time. That's what's up. Uh, my first time even being there since I've been legal. Yeah. I think I went there when I was like 13 or something, but I barely even remember it. So this time, I'm there for business, but at the same time, I do want to kind of like enjoy it. Right. And that's on the 20th, November. The 20th, 20th. yeah. And I was telling, uh, we we're talking off camera, but bro, that's a fight weekend. Right. Like, so, so it's going to be packed. Yeah, it's going to be, packed, yeah, gonna be, gonna be man, it's going to be a lot going on that weekend. How, how do you feel about like, because obviously, bro, like, that lineup and even performing with Little Rod, like those are all OGs. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah, like it, you like being like in your twenties, but you're being asked to perform with them. What is what does that feel like for you too, bro? Because it's like I, I'm assuming, but no, I know. Like these are people you looked up to mm -hmm. and that you listened to, and now you're like going to be sharing the stage um, with them. What 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 does that feel like as far as like being the age that you are, and like being able to be on the stage with some OGs and then having that respect for you too. I think that uh, it's it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like something that was like kind of like prone to happen. Yeah. Mainly because those are artists that I um, listened to growing up, so they have a little little bit in, or they have influence in in my music, you know. So, um, so part of them is 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 living through my music, you know. At the end of the day, so a lot of their fan base also, you know, are familiar with my music. So I think it was prone to happen, and um, I'm excited to uh, to see how the end result is at the show and how people take me, you know, being in the middle of everything and just coming out and doing my thing compared to having an OG step off and then a, you right, know, a right. young buck get on, you know? So you, you, yeah, you have a song with Lil Rob. I think you got some in the works with Sugar Free, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is gonna be my first time linking with him. I talk to him on the phone all the time, but as all these other artists, they're super busy. Yeah. So this is like gonna be my first time kicking in with him, um, doing the show with him and also Warren G. Uh, so I'm I'm super excited, man. I, out, man. I I can't even like really believe that like next week I'm about to be out there, you know, That's show, tight, showcasing bro. the city and, yeah, right. and myself. Yeah. And then you got some videos. I, I, you've been working on some videos too that are gonna be dropping or. Yeah, uh, we have a couple. We're ending the year off with uh, kind of wrapping up the the project. Uh, Can you handle the funk? And then I have a couple of like singles. I might even put a trap song out there. Just you know, maybe just to throw it out there. But um, for the most part, everything that I'm doing now is for next year. Okay. Like, especially the music. That's what's um, up. A lot of it's just getting prepared for next year. And the year's already over, so for right now, I'm just trying to wrap it up with a couple more releases. Cool. But So these will be videos off the last project? Uh, yeah. Okay. And then a couple of, like, singles sprinkled in there. Um, but nothing really, like, too, like like a project or anything like that yet, you know? So. And when are we getting those? Are we going to get those in December, the videos, or that's Gen Y? Uh, we're going to drop a, a, a video this week. Oh, for real? Yeah. Um, so before you go to Vegas? Yeah. That's what's for up. For sure. And then, um, 
and then another one like early December, and then you know, and then next year I'll try to have my project done. That's what's up, man. We're looking forward to that. I don't even have a title for it yet. I'm kind of everywhere. Right now, I'm just like, uh, I'm just trying to figure things out because I have like a solid amount of songs for it, but I don't really have it like locked in and the storyline and have it all like connected yet, you know, the project. And how, how does that process play out, bro? It's like creating a title for an album. Like, does that just come organically it's, or you eventually it like... It takes a long time. Yeah. The last one, the Can You Handle the Funk, that one came like, that one came in like a couple of days. Um... I don't know how it came so fast, but this one I'm I'm really struggling. I've been trying to come up with a name for it for at least three months, awesome. and like it's like I, I don't know, like I really don't know, but it'll come though. Yeah. Um, it's just like you need it. You'll know when it's right. You know, yeah. you never want to rush it. Like. That's exciting, bro. Yeah, yeah cause uh, during COVID, bro, I felt like you you really like um you provided a lot of content for us. You know what I mean? You were working. <laughs> during that time and, and it showed and and the fruits of that labor has is kind of like paying off by you performing in la with little rob and um now going to vegas and performing with you know alongside warren g and yeah. sugar free like that well, wouldn't have happened unless you were grinding because I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm i'm assuming that a lot of a lot of them started noticing you because of that work that you did during COVID and what you released during that time yeah right? but yeah. i mean the the main thing was we, we never stopped working and that's what it was like COVID. we were even working the same amount just as hard before COVID even hit, it was just that when COVID did hit, a lot of people took it differently. We just kept working. Yeah. So I think it kind of showed like during COVID and it gave us like people were kind of like, damn, you guys are working harder. But it was really just that like nobody else was really like putting shit out. Right. You know, that putting discipline. things out. So, you know, paid off. But yeah, man, that's what I've been working on. You know, what's what's, we want to know what's up with the city. Yeah, man. So like from the last time we met till now. Uh, it was a busy October, bro. Like we we officially launched and opened the doors for the Resilience yeah. um, Mentoring Program site in Oceanside, which is a, a program uh, that I'm a part of that mentors youth on juvenile uh, probation, so youth and young adults from Oceanside mm-hmm. and Vista. Uh, we opened the doors on October 4th um, in the city, so that was love, man. I appreciate you guys coming out. Matt Strange came out. We had a lot of people from the city um, that right, came out right. and showed up. Yeah, congratulations on that. Yeah, the, man. the building and. And being able to have a place like that, like for for the youth, yeah, that's a big thing, man. Because yeah. I, 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 I mean, when I was younger, the boys and girls club was kind of the thing, but then it was like, it just was so like far out for right. us, you know, especially where I stayed at. So I think I think where you where, what you have going on is 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 dope, especially like just the freedom of going in the building and yeah man what we, you guys have like recording equipment, yeah. you know, you guys have your own like kitchen, you know. Yeah. And people can uh, sit down and watch movies or TV, whatever they want to do. You know, we're just creating an environment, man. I think we also allowed some of the kids that have been with us from the beginning to have a say in what they wanted at the site and mm-hmm. help us create the site. You yeah. know, because the, especially for the population we serve, man, like we're working with kids. When we first started, bro, a lot of people we heard this from the police department and different people that didn't believe in the vision of the program because everyone on staff. All of the mentors are two strikers. You know what I mean. Everyone's you know former gang member from Oceanside, formerly incarcerated, and we're mentoring uh, what is considered high risk on probation. So Oceanside's highest risk youth. And man, we heard things like, man, some kids are just too far gone. Um, you know, you know, like they they're never gonna get it. They're lost causes. And you know, with the mentors, all of them being two strikers and being community leaders, it's kind of like there was a time that someone said that about them. And the impact that they've had on the city um, tells people that it's not true, right? And so, like, that day was was amazing, bro. Um, the mayor came out, and I almost cried, bro, but she read a declaration, and she named October 4th, 2021, as Resilience Community Mentoring Day in the city of Oceanside. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. And which was, like, for me, it was it was very powerful because of what it meant for the mentors. For the mentors, you know what I'm saying? They're all former gang members from Oceanside. Mm -hmm. And they caught most of their cases here in Oceanside. And there was a time where people said that they were lost causes and that um, they were bringing havoc to the city. Mm -hmm. And here was the mayor, you know, years, you know, later. um, Backing you up. Yeah, and declaring that day Resilience Community Mentoring Day in the the city of Oceanside. Yeah. And so, man, that, that was love. But then just seeing the kids, how they've embraced the site, and then now they have a place that they can come. Yeah. There was one of the girls in the program, man. One day she was sitting in the studio because the studio is like a game room slash like studio. And uh, she was sitting in there and she was like, man, this place is like, she's like, it reminds me of one of those magazines. You know what I'm saying? I was like, what you mean? She's like, you know, those magazines where like all the furniture matches and everything's <laughs> brand new. And so it's like, 
But the reality is, like, the kids are coming from areas where it's, like, you know, they're challenging. Mm. And so for them to have their own space and a, and a place that they can be proud of and just chill, yeah, it, it's love, man. So, yeah, man, that, that's what we got going on. Um, that um, was the biggest thing uh, since the last time we met, man. You know, just been busy with everything going on as far as that was going on with the Junior Seau Amphitheater, right. you know what I mean, and advocating for the city and uh, making sure that, Man, the city came out and showed out, you know, and said, you guys are not going to remove that, you know what I mean? And and not only are you not going to remove it, but you're going to listen to the community input yeah. that we have. So, you know, we got a couple of things coming up um, in the next few months. But for now, man, it's just like, you know, th- those were the main things. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, man, with that being said, you got that concert on November 20th. Uh, we got Coach B today, uh, who's the owner of Navarre's Boxing, uh, who's also a trainer slash manager. Um, and he's got a fight November 20th. One of his fighters, Kyle Irwin, yes, sir. Um, is fighting at in Pomona. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that, man? And, and welcome, man. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, man. of course. You know, it's a pleasure to meet Desi. I've yeah. been listening to this guy for a couple of years yeah. now and stuff. So, you it's know. Nice to meet you too, too man. Little, I got a couple questions for you. But now, go I'll ahead, wait, Ryan, Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. But, you know, yeah, we're going to have fun this weekend. We're going to be fighting a big fight. It's going to be fun. Our first fight for this kid since the whole shutdown, basically the whole COVID stopped his whole career. Yeah. He literally fought his first pro fight like i think it was the weekend before two weeks before the whole shutdown so it's gonna be his first fight here in the states it's gonna be fun it's gonna be exciting it's gonna be exciting That's what, so and how, how long have you been training him uh training him shoot like probably like nine years yeah yeah he's been with me for like nine years he's an old side kid so so around what, what time did you uh, around when did you open your your gym so the Navaris Boxing, we opened that up probably about like seven years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was at Rhino's Boxing Gym for about like 13 years. Oh, okay. But before that, I was with Encinitas. I've been kind of like with whatever my pops is with. Mm-hmm. But when I was born, Navaris Boxing was like my backyard in Tri-City. Mm-hmm. That's like where I started boxing and stuff, Navaris Boxing. And then we just took it back. But we were in Vista for like, I was in Vista for like 13 years and then we went to Navarre's box and did that one and then during the whole pandemic we had a whole little altercation with the landlord and all that and then we ended up in Oceanside Mm -hmm. but I've lived here in Oceanside born and raised I lived down the street from here Mm -hmm. so like for me ended up feeling like we ended up coming home like you know what I mean so it feels a lot better but I've always tried to help the youth like help all the kids help anybody I know in trouble I love working with Jimmy in this program because those kids like give them something else to look forward to couple of those kids really took it and changing their lives around and stuff yeah. i like it i don't care if he brings me 30 kids and 29 of them go and fuck up again as long as we get one you know what i mean that turns his life around yeah. i love it it's love worth it. it man even like your boy joe uh <laughs> joe big joe yeah joe you know what I'm saying? oh yeah. yeah he's putting in that work yeah. he's losing that weight and he's having uh, fun yeah. you know what i mean he's turning his life around he's changing it up and yeah. stuff like no. i just like to try to help people as much as i can mm-hmm. any way possible yeah, man, I was going to, so Brian um, grew up in Tri-City, and um, and then you moved to the Valley. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so when he was, when COVID happened, was happening, bro, I was sending this dude pictures of, like, vacant places, like, in the Valley. I was like, bro, like, there's a spot over here by the Popeyes. Like, it'd be dope to bring Navarre's. Yeah. And then he hit me up, and he's like, bro, we're trying to get an Oceanside. Like, that would be, you know, a dream come true. And one of the reasons that, that, that I feel like that was, like, man, had we had a boxing gym, 20, 30 years ago in the city of Oceanside, we'd have probably already had some world champs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we got, there's a lot of people that we all know that we grew up with or that had a lot of heart, mad athletic, didn't mind fighting, but we didn't have like a structure, you know what I mean? To like create a pipeline. So there was a year fighting. that the city of Oceanside, and my dad did a boxing gym with, uh, I forgot, Simone's guy. He, Wayne. Wayne. Wayne, Wayne yeah. yep. Over there, was it Bishop over there? Mesa? Nova Bishop. Or, and Arthur, that park out there? Yeah, at Melba Bishop. Yeah, yeah, they did a boxing program there for like a year. It was pretty dope. All the kids, local kids, neighborhood kids were all coming in. And then after a year, the city canceled it and said it was a little dangerous. But that's like the only time the city of Oceanside ever did kind of any kind of boxing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, but I, I think that having an institution, and Navarre's boxing is an institution, you know what I mean? Yeah. Having a, a place where I feel comfortable bringing my kids, like the, the resilience youth, we bring them there, bro, like, ankle monitors and everything you know what i mean like they come in and it's just like um and immediately this dude grabs the mitts and he'd be like hey man come on let's work you know and it's like 
and the love that they get in that place. But it also goes because you you growing up in the city, it's kind of like you see them and you're like, no, nah, man, I'm gonna. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Experience all that shit myself, you yeah. know what I mean? Whether my friends or family, you know, I've been around it. And then like I grew up over there in Tri City. Mm-hmm. It was wild. I went to what was the school, Chris McAuliffe, but I lived in the ghetto. So then I went to school, Chris McAuliffe. It was completely different. Right, because it was a brand new school at the time. It was all white yeah, people yeah, and stuff. Yeah. No, you know what I mean? But uh, it was a little different. And then that's when I went to the valley, and holy shit, that was like a. What was that experience? Because you went from like, yeah, you went from Tri City to Arthur, right? Yeah, and that's it, when it was just a whole nother world. It was you, like, that was in middle school. Uh, elementary school, elementary fifth grade, school, still, yeah. or like fourth grade, yeah. yeah. So, so a little bit about your history, bro, because um, just so people know, because I think people will drive past Coast Highway and they see Navarre's boxing. And they may just say, like, oh, okay, that's just another gym. But they don't really understand that, like, no, nah, man, like, your dad was out here in the city with Wayne, yeah. you know, back in the early 90s. You went pro yourself. Your brother, did, your brothers went pro as well, right? Uh, my big brother just did amateur, my little brother did. Right, but you guys grew up, like, in the deep. Yeah. In the Tri-City in the deep. How was it trying to navigate that? And, like, before we got on camera, you were talking about, like, having to make weight for a fight and the amount of discipline it took to prepare for a fight and... As far as I known you, man, since elementary school, you were boxing then. Yeah. So how was like your upbringing growing up in Oceanside, but also as a boxer? It was tough because like growing up in Oceanside and being a boxer, everybody from every neighborhood wants to test you. So I could just be doing my normal stuff and running, and this guy's trying to scrap me in the corner over here, and that's how I was, especially over there in the Deep Valley. I used to get fight with all the blood, everybody every once in a while, and that's. You know, it's just something. It was part of being a boxer. It's like, okay, you want to be a boxer, you're gonna have to fight a little bit, but you have to control yourself outside of that too. So, but I always had my discipline and training and doing what I had to do. It's probably the only thing that kept me completely out of trouble, because I would like, you know, get my feet wet a little bit, but and then stay disciplined because I gotta train, I gotta eat, I gotta go to the gym, I gotta do this. And then when I had that spare time, I would get in a little bit of trouble. So I feel like boxing really saved me. And it's just one of those things you have to have discipline. And you just learn it over the years. It's like kind of gets embedded in you. What, what does discipline mean to you, bro? Like when you say... like what, Running, what is that? training, eating, doing all that stuff. Just doing what you have to do, regardless of how you feel. Yeah. Regardless of what you want to do, do what you have to do. My thing was, my dad always told me in training, is like, you got to train like the other guy's training harder than you. Like, he's trying to kill you. Like, it's the last fight of your life. It's basically how you got to fight every fight. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's the last fight of your life. Put everything into it. You, you talk about that too, bro, like discipline. You know what I mean? Like, that's something I always hear here at the store, um, being around you as well. Like, COVID, you know what I mean? Your discipline was like, no, we're going to work. Like, what, what does that mean to you, bro? Like, discipline in regards to your craft. <clears throat> it's definitely like uh, like you said training because there are other people that are like working when when I feel like I'm not working or or people that are trying to do as much as you or trying to do what you're doing but better um, so for me discipline is just like I think that discipline will separate you from everybody else because discipline it shows and whatever you do boxing what you do as a musician discipline it shows you know um, cause it, 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 it gives you like, it, it kind of teaches you and it, sh- it shapes you kind of, and you can tell by the work ethic or, uh, you can just see it, you know, for me, it's kind of like what I'm doing. Like, like this weekend I'm about to be in Las Vegas at a convention center. Um, but I didn't get that off of luck, you know, it was discipline, the discipline to work throughout COVID, the discipline to be like, oh, I got a thousand dollars. What am I gonna do with this thousand dollars? Am I gonna spend it on my next video, or am I gonna spend it on something on my, for myself? But it's all about what 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 you do when you don't want to do it. Yeah. You know, like there's times, man, where I just want to just go and like buy all these fucking clothes or go shopping and do all that that that, that crazy shit that people do. Mm-hmm. People go on vacations or whatever. But it's like you know, like you have to have the discipline to know what you need to to be spending on or what you need to be doing you know for you maybe it's like you need to be in the gym but maybe some days you're just tired or some days you have more things to do and it's like at the end of the day you need to work on your craft and you need to have something in your head that's kind of like 
I don't know, for me, like, I have, like, natural discipline or something because, like, sometimes I get a little depressed, bro, like, if I don't put a song out or, or if I, like, not, re like, posting anything or releasing anything or, or not working or, or not doing something, I get anxiety or I get a little depressed, to be honest with you. And that itself is, like, a small little discipline for me. Uh, and then I have the team, you know. Yeah. So it's kind of like both. It's like... Do you ever not want to get in the studio and then you go in there and it's like you, you produce There's been times like where I was like, oh, fuck, I'm going to the studio today. I have to do this. I have to do that. I got to go help out this person, that person. But once I get in the studio, it's like I don't want to leave. Um, yeah. That's the difference. There's been times where I'll go in there yeah. and then I'll come back out and it's, it's dark outside and I'm like, fuck. Like, I still <laughs> got to do... I still got to do my, my daily routine, you know? But no, I think discipline is, is like the key to success for sure yeah discipline and consistency i feel like that's how i kind of i made it yeah. by being consistent going to work every day besides me training and doing right. what i've done mm -hmm. me being a coach and a trainer i feel like i've been consistent all these years so that's how i've got my fighters my clientele and all that how much did your father's influence because your dad was your dad was working with the community and there's newspaper clippings of like from the early 90s bro like 92 in regards to like certain shootings that happened in Oceanside back then, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And then him and his dad and, and Wayne partnering up to, and there's pictures of them, like, literally, like, in his backyard, kids learning how to box on, it wasn't Union Tribune, it was North County Times, right, or something I like that. I remember, but, but yeah, it was all it newspaper. Clippings. So, like, watching your dad do that, your dad being a small business owner, um, running a restaurant, training you, and then, like, how has that transition from you, like, becoming a prof you were a professional boxer and then becoming a business owner running, like, Novaris, like, what's that discipline like from you being a fighter to now being a business owner? How has that carried over? It's a lot different. Two different worlds. Yeah. Two different worlds. But I feel like I've been kind of already a business owner because I've already been managing fighters for all these years. I've already kind of been doing everything but for somebody else. That's yeah. literally how it was. So now I'm doing it for myself. The, the thing I learned from my dad was how to do that. And it was just a consistency. Get to work every day. Do what you got to do. Show up to the fights. If Jimmy says he wants to fight on April 1st, tell Jimmy what he has to do. And if Jimmy does it, let's go. If Jimmy doesn't do it, I'm going to have a weekend off that weekend. And so is Jimmy. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're not fighting. But I think he just taught me just hard work. He taught me how to work hard. Yeah. That's literally. And then spending summers in Mexico with the family over there, their work is just sunrise to sundown. There's no alarm clocks. No alarm clocks. So you're already up before the sun, and you're grinding all day for 12 bucks. Back in the day, it was like five bucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Growing up over there, spending summers there, then come back here, I was like, oh shit, this little apartment is heaven. <laughs> yeah. Literally, these little meals right here is heaven. Yeah. Appreciate things. How does it feel like being from Oceanside, bro, and being a business owner in the city, and like having not only a business owner in the city, bro, like downtown has changed a lot from the time when we were all kids. You know what I mean? When I'm in your gym training, and it's like they got your music bumping the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> the other day, matter of fact, the other day, uh, there was a song in the middle of the workout. I think I was in the ring or whatever, and I was like, yo, I said, I didn't know you listened to Ali Man. Yeah. He was and he was like, he's like, I did, bro. He's like, I got to him because of Desi. He said, Desi did a song with them, and it got me listening to him. Yeah, oh, you yeah. turned me on to a lot of those fools from oh, Mexico yeah. and shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. think it was uh, Nothing Easy, right? Yeah, but yeah. Like, but like when I'm in when I'm inside his gym, it actually feels like you're back in Oceanside in the '90s. Yeah, it, it reminds me of like, cause I used to get my hair cut next next door to like where you're, next door to where the Dolphin Motel is. I think I don't know what's there now, but like I used to hang out a lot in in that, especially in that part of like Coast Highway, right? And so uh, when I'm in your gym, it reminds me. I feel like I'm back like in Oceanside. Even the the crowd that comes, yeah, you know, it's a bunch of people from the city working out there. It's crazy, bro, because I've done this my whole life in Vista. None of my friends from Oceanside, so far away, it's so far away, open up a gym in Oceanside. If you open up a gym in Oceanside, I'll come. That's how they all said it, like it was so far away. And as soon as we moved here, they came. And it turned into a whole nother vibe. Yeah. Like all my old homies and other friends and other people I went to school with started coming here because it's Oceanside. And it's, like you said, it's a completely different world. Right, but it's like... I love it. I never thought I would have a gym. Right. Especially right there, right on Coast Highway. And then that that place, me and my wife, we've like, we literally, 
like her parents know my parents we're family friends all that shit all our lives mm -hmm. but we've never met each other until we started boxing that's how it was and the gym where we're at now that used to be the reggae shop it used to yeah. be, what was it called uh I, I forgot i just i remember yeah it was like a small the incense when I was when I was <laughs> they, I, I used to get my I used to get my hair cut right there. It was and, a regular stuff for like twenty years. Yeah, yeah I forgot what it was called. Culture or something. Something like man. that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So but we used to go there like when we first went there, we're like, Oh shit. We're like, This is that reggae store. She's like, Yeah. We both used to go there every year to buy something for the Bob Festival. We used to go to the Bob Marley Festival. Mm -hmm. But we never went together. Right, right. We right. never knew each other. We're just like, How crazy is that? We're in the same building that we used to go once a year. It's just like small, bro. It's just small. And it's just, for me, it's like a dream kind of come true. Yeah. I never thought I would be there. I never really expected that. And it happened. Yeah. And it happened. That's dope, bro. Yeah, I I'm fuck. I'm stoked. Yeah. I'm stoked. I love it. And then this is another thing. That same road, bro, it goes all the way down to Mexico to my grandpa's. All the way down. Same. It's the highway one. So they got all their other businesses on the same road. It's literally on Highway 1 in Mexico. Oh, that's crazy. So my grandpa was like, oh, shit. Like, you got businesses on the same street as me, bro. Like, literally. What did your grandpa do in Mexico? Uh, meat markets, carne yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they do cattle. Yeah. Cattle. I think there's a lot of parallels, man. I think one thing was dope for me because, uh, you know, being uh, when the O-Sider did, uh, did a feature on Matt Strange, and they had Andres and Daniel um, inside the store, and I think, like, two pages over, they had you and your wife on Navarre's boxing. Yeah. Like, back, you know, next to each other. For me, I, I I thought that was just dope because as they're gentrifying Oceanside, you got Matt Strange. You get off the freeway, you see Matt Strange, and then you go down to Coast Highway and you see Navarre's. And to know that both both businesses are ran by, like, people who grew up in the city. Yeah. And, and you guys are all, like, young, too. You know what I mean? It's not like... I, I think sometimes people see a business and they assume, oh, they have money or you know they're older or whatever but to like these are businesses ran by people in their 20s and 30s yeah you we know what i mean shit in downtown oceanside I, I think that's just like it's, it's super inspiring bro yeah and I, yeah. I didn't come from no money you know what i mean i worked hard for everything like literally so for us it's it's a blessing bro it's a blessing and it's literally the hard work and consistency yeah that's what paid off even during the whole covid we shut down for a couple of weeks and then we try to get right back to work yeah and then all that stuff happened we moved but we could have quit boxing for a year. A lot of people are like, all right, cool. You lost your facility. Let that shit go. You can use my gym. You know what I mean? Train your fighters there and not make no money and not run your business and do what you do. And we are like, nah, like we need to step it up a whole nother notch and just move forward. And we didn't give up. Like my lady did all that hard work, bro, searching and making the phone calls. She does. She's the brains. I just do all the hard work. <laughs> Yelling at everybody. She's the brains, bro. <laughs> Yeah, man. I. But we didn't give up, you know what I mean? And that's how we made it to where we're at, by mm -hmm. just keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting. Yeah, I told Desi, too, man. I was like, bro, your music in that gym is, like, played. I mean, right. I'll be in there for, like, an hour, and I hear, like, six, seven of songs. <laughs> back to back to the album, you're just like, oh, shit. How many songs do you think you've cr you've made that actually were were put out, like, public, like actually put out for for listeners? Not that you made totals. I know you've made a lot of songs um, that we've never heard, but how many songs do you Like, average, I released, like, so far, I've probably released, like, a third of, like, all music I've recorded. Like, songs. How many How many do you think that is? Um, I mean, a lot. Yeah. And, and, you know, it depends on how far you, you're asking, because each year I probably record, each year I probably record, I'll probably say, like, three songs, a month, so what is that in a year? Thirty six, around there. It's a lot, bro. Um, but some some months a little more than than yeah. the last. Yeah. Well, it all depends though. But um, yeah, no, like out of out of out of all the songs I've recorded, only a third of them I put out, or I feel like they're good enough to put out. Not every song is good. Right. Um, but I just keep trying. I never stop trying. He was saying earlier that. And it's true that yeah. your music's just getting better. Yeah, well, I'll be trying. Like, I, I, I really do be trying. Like, it's in the not studio, like you're putting music. Because even if it's not a good song, at least I, I try it, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I go again, you know, the next day or the day after, and I try again. But that that, that goes back to, like, one, you, you love what you do, but two, it's just like, man, you're, you're driven by something that you can't even, like, explain to people. Only people who are driven by a certain level of passion 
like will understand yeah and no one's gonna tell you no you know what i mean it's just it's like, hard it's hard yeah. to have a conversation about like music or like my passion for music to like other people right um because it's something inex- unexplainable yeah. Yeah. like I, it's like something that i can't get away from uh, i can't stop writing i you know i just i just it's not that i want to be an artist so bad it's like i need to be an artist so bad because that's like i can't do anything else like there's nothing else i'm good at you know so it's something that I do every day. Yeah. It's like second nature to me, you know. So it's like a part of me. So I just keep trying, man. I think there's so many parallels between boxing and music, bro. I keep mentioning it, but as a fighter, you have to, like, also, if, like, if you're a fighter and you're training every day to be a fighter, it's like you feel like, man, this is what I was born. Who else would get punched in the face, you know what I mean, for a living? That's all I know. It's either I do this or I open up a restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> it's all I know. It's all I've been bred to do. I yeah, feel like okay. it's there's some ways it's similar, you know. Yeah. Like, pretty sure before you go to a fight, you're preparing for it. Which for me, it would be preparing for a show. Uh, you'd be going to the gym, and I would be re- rehearsing my lyrics. Um, you go to the show, you get butterflies. Um, uh, I, I mean, I go to a show, I get butterflies. You go to a fight, and I'm pretty sure you have the same feeling. Like you're you're super hype. Yeah. It's almost to the point where you have anxiety. Um, and then it all gets released as soon as it starts. It all gets released. Yeah. And when I when I'm when I once I'm done performing and I get off the stage, I feel like oh my god, I feel like all that anxiety is gone. You know, I feel I feel good. You know, and uh, and then you just go back to the gym, you do it again for the next fight. And yeah. It's the same for me. You know, I have to prepare for the next performance and the next album. You know? So that's what this week's gonna be like for you, preparing for Vegas. Like yeah, yeah. this whole week, I gotta do a good show. That's gonna be I, dope, I have to bro. do a good performance. So this whole week I'm just practicing. You know, I'll probably just record one or two songs, but I'm not really gonna be writing like that. I'm just gonna be practicing, for sure. Like I said, it's been it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while since I did my own show. Um, I think the last show I did was that live performance we put on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Besides that, I, I it's been a while. Yeah, and that was with no crowd. That was just like yeah, yeah. just yeah, <laughs> me and the camera and you know my. I'm on the team and in the band. It's crazy, bro, because like naturally in person, you're so laid back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're very laid back and you listen. You know, when you're in conversations, you, you really listen. And um, But when you perform, it's like the energy that you bring to a show or the energy that you bring. Like, obviously, you love what you do, but it's like, oh, you're in your element. Mm-hmm. Because when people see you perform, they, they probably think you're very like outgoing, like life of the party. But like, yeah. A lot of times, man, you're very reserved, laid back person. Like yeah. when you're not on stage or when you're like in your element of, of music. Yeah, I'm, I'll be, I'll be. It's kind of like I don't know, like it's something that's like very, like stress relieving, very stress relieving for me, um, performing and and being on the microphone. It's 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 it gets me hyped. Yeah. You know, but in person, I just, you know, I just be doing what I have to do is all, you know, focus. I'm like, focus on what I have to yeah. do. But then once I'm in front of people, it's like, all right, I've been focused and I've been working toward what I have to do. Now let's do it. <laughs> That's what's up. But, yeah. And you're the same way. I mean, you got to fight. Even as a coach now, like you're thinking about prepping my fighter all week, right? Because the fight's November 20th. This, yeah. like basically last week, this week was yeah. our last little dial in it all next week is just lose weight resting chilling mm-hmm. sweat it out like so this was the last week of stressful like whatever we did this week that's gonna help next week whatever we do next week's not gonna help at all it's just making weight so that's all we've been doing the last little trying this the guy does this when he does this hopefully let's do this and trying to dial it in dial it in and then hopefully it works on saturday yeah man we're excited we're taking the resilience kids up to the fight and what is the fight in Pomona? In Pomona, that's, yeah. right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, it was funny, man, because we were <laughs> we were at the site that we are resilience, and I was we were, I was there with the mentor and some of the kids, and they were like they've been looking forward to the fight because Kyle, who's the, the fighter, also trains the kids sometimes when we go up in there, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Where's the fight?" And I was like, it's "In Pomona." Most of the kids don't leave Oceanside, you know what I mean? So they've never left like the city, and I remember uh, someone's like, "Where's Pomona?" Literally, bro, like everyone in the room was, was no, they said, "What's in Pomona?" Everyone in the room was like sugar free, because <laughs> they they haven't left the city. But like to them, they they hear Pomona, they think sugar free. But yeah. the other day we were at the gym, and we're getting ready to walk out. And one of the kids that's um, at the gym with us looks at Brian. He's like, "Bro, I'm excited." He's like, "I've never been to LA before." And Brian was like, "What, bro? You never been to LA?" And he was like, "Nah, I never been to LA." And so it's just like 
but that's the reality of the kids that we mentor too like their world is oceanside yeah they yeah. haven't been out of this little circle and haven't experienced a lot of things yeah so like for us to be able to go to a fight to see someone living out their dreams it's yeah. not we're not just going to a fight we're seeing two people live out their dreams like you being the trainer and then the fighter who like it's all it's also about that because if we could go to vegas bro we would go to vegas to support you too you know what i mean it's yeah. just like to to see you on a stage where like bro that yeah that was gonna be badass yeah. Yeah. i seen that lineup i think um, i seen it somewhere else and i was like oh shit this motherfucker made it yeah, <laughs> look my mom, I made it. <laughs> yeah man I'm, I'm like i said man i'm so excited i'm pretty sure you're super excited for your fight so. oh yeah yeah i'm so stoked so stoked you know it'd be dope if you I'm get like, a song with warren g out of it bro yeah. <laughs> um yeah um th- the best part about doing festivals or shows that have other artists in them is meeting the other yeah, artists and, networking. Yeah, and connecting with them and uh, trying to get in a rela- relationship with them. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do, you know, try yeah. to work my magic. I'm a people's person, so I'm going to yeah, try to yeah, chop yeah. it up with him, you know, yeah, or, or see dope, what I could bro. do. Yeah, that, 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 that would be huge, man. Man, I think just, man, before we wrap, man, I, I think the work ethic is what I, I, I admire so much about Matt Strange. You know what I mean? Like Andres, De- Andres and Daniel and, your, and yourself, but also you, bro. Like um, the gym, like you guys open at seven, but people tell me all the time, they're like, yeah, man, if you get there at six in the morning, you can hear Brian in there just yelling, whap, 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 <laughs> by himself. He said he opens the, the gym and he's like pouring sweat. And it's just like, you Every can day, hear him though. training from like Coast Highway. It's just like, you can hear this dude like hitting the bags, like screaming. And then I follow him on Instagram, bro. And it's like, we go in there at three, you know what I mean, to train. Like he closes the gym what nine thirty, ten. Yeah. You get there like at five. Yeah. And that's like Monday through Friday. Yeah. Monday like. It'll yeah. pay off though. <laughs> in yeah, the long it's run. Like that that mm-hmm. that work ethic is just it's dope to see from like my peers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like because when you go in there, you see the success. People love being there, but it also goes back to like because you love being there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, my thing too is I love what you're doing with the kids is you're letting them see a lot of things that they they'll never see. Yeah. Things that they'll see they'll probably want to be or do. Like uh, today, um, we closed the gym privately because we did private sparring. Mm-hmm. But I let I don't know if you know Timothy. Yeah, you know? he know, yeah, he knows. He works out with Timothy. Okay, yeah. I let Timothy come in there to go train. He hit me up. He's like, hey, can I come use the gym? I was like, bro, pull up. Like, use the fucking gym. And then he showed up with one of the kids, uh, Jacob. Yeah. And then we had this uh, professional fighter. His name's Brandon Lee. He's like a famous guy. But Jacob was just like, oh, shit, that's Brandon Lee. And he's just looking at this, like, you know, famous fighter. He is a famous fighter. He's well-known. He's out there. He's a, well, contender, you know yeah. what I mean? And he was just like, oh, shoot. Like, for him to see him here in Oceanside, he was like, oh, they're sparring? Like, Kyle sparring him? He was, like, tripping out. And he was so stoked. And I was like... Take a picture with him, and he, you know, he doesn't right, get excited. Right, right. He literally put a little smirk on his face, and this was little, little thug. You know what I'm saying? So he got a little smirk on his face. I was like, take a picture with them, and he like took the picture with them. He was stoked. He was so stoked. For, for me, like the highlight of today was seeing that kid just like get that picture. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even doing everything I did all day today. It was that little like the happiness that he got in that face. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it, I, I bring him here too, man. Like I, I've, I've brought the kids here. Um, quite a bit to the store um, because I wanted them to see Andres you know what I mean and it's like sometimes I'm like man he owns it like when we leave we walk out I'm like man Andres owns this place and they're like what he's young and I'm like yeah bro like he's he's been this is his like he's been doing this since he was like 16 because I want them to see like damn he looks like me like he's young yeah and this is his you know what I mean like he he runs this place and so it's it just being intentional show some successful people um, that are not much older than them, but are also from here. Cause one time I, one time we were coming from like a field trip and I was like, it was one of the kids birthdays. So I was like, man, what you want for your birthday? He's like, man, can we stop by Matt Strange? Can you get me a shirt? I was like, yeah. So we get here and you're, you were out front. Oh, yeah. And then the kid was like, oh damn, that's Desi. And then another kid was like, he was like, oh, he's a rapper, right? And he was like, yeah. And he was like, yeah, man. He's like, man, I'm just going to stay in the van. Because we have, like, a resilience <laughs> And I was like, why, wow, bro? I said, just come in. He's like, nah, man, I get mad, like, shy. And I was like, bro, just come in. We come in. And both of them, they said, oh, there's Desi. And then when they got in here, they were, like, super quiet around him, bro. And then when we got back in the van, they're like, man, I don't know why I get like that. <laughs> 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 as soon as they closed the door, the van door. <laughs> yeah, they were like, 
But <laughs> no, because they didn't say anything to him. They were just like, oh, what's up? You know what I mean? But yeah. when they got in, they were like, man, I don't know why I got nervous. Like, but it was cool for them just to feel like, man, I can touch, I can touch this person. Yeah. Because then it's like, no, nah, man, they're living out their dreams. And I'm watching other people, even like Brandon Lee training there. Like, um, Joel Diaz is his coach, right? Uh, or like train like yeah, at, at his gym, yeah. but still though, like he's like what twenty two and zero or something like that. Twenty three right now. Yeah, twenty three and zero. So it's just like he's yeah, he's a name person in the sport. You know, you're out here doing things, bro. But you're like, you know, I can, people can touch you. you Reachable, know I mean? yeah. Yeah, and so it's just like I think that that gives people like, I don't know, it's empowering. It, you know it what gives I mean? them like the sense that they could do it. Yeah. Just like that kid that did that video, dope mm-hmm. ass song. This yeah. kid the dope mm. ass song at what, his uh his, his resilience group mm. and he was at the gym the other day and he was like you want to hear it and i was like put that shit on bro yeah turn that shit up and that shit was hard bro that shit was like yeah, you sit cool. there and start like oh one, shit one of the fighters there looked at him he's like bro if if brian would have just put this in the rotation i would have never know this was you like, yeah, said, yeah. Tight. and he you're was like, like one of his role models like yeah. idols though because yeah. when your shit comes on he's just like this desi right that's how he said <laughs> this desi right that's what he starts saying. <laughs> yeah, and it's man. and it's cool if he could like you know meet you one day or some shit because oh, yeah, for sure. it's not like you're out of the reach you know what i mean yeah. like and you could talk to him and give yeah. him a few little tips or but you could be if you want i think the fact that you make yourself accessible yeah you know you're what always I mean? around like the people. You're, you're tapped into like the community is like the big i'll thing. never turn down a conversation man you gotta <laughs> be a people's person yeah i'll be i'll be giving as much knowledge as i have on me you know or whatever you have a question for i can answer it to the best of my ability um but me myself i'm still learning you know also so yeah. i'm a student as well yeah yeah, it never ends. Well, you gotta be open. I'm looking forward to that project, bro. You said it drops in 2022. Yeah, so I'm I'm dropping the this project next year, or it sounds like it's far away, but yeah. this next year, and um, it's it's gonna be a big one for me. Um, just like the show, where I'm like side side by side with these big like yeah. household legend legendary names. Um, my project, I'm trying to have the same way. I'm trying to have it, you know, with some good household names on there you know so that's what i'm working on yeah so hopefully you know this weekend i can try to see how good my people skills are and try to get that warranty feature <laughs> we'll see let's go I'll try my best the dope thing about that is bro you're working you're working like alongside people that like that was it for us yeah you know what i mean like warren g was like that man he was you know yeah hearing he, his yeah, music bro. was in sugar freeze music yeah. like you know, I, I remember hearing their music growing up, but now it's like I'm be able to meet them, and and you know the ultimate goal is to work with them. Yeah, uh, and I think it's gonna happen. I, I know so. I we're probably gonna, gonna be bumping a lot of sugar free next weekend when we're in Pomona. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. no, I mean I I think it's, it's it's amazing, bro. And then I know you guys got to fight November twentieth. If he that's his American debut, right? Because that's yeah. Kyle's first fight in yeah. in, the, in the U.S. If he wins, then then it's like. Then we'll hopefully keep moving with this promoter or whatnot, and then just move forward from there. That's awesome. That's man. it. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Best of luck on the fight yeah. too. It's this yeah. weekend. Yeah, yeah. Saturday coming up. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be fun. I'm excited. I'm nervous as hell, but I'm excited, ready to go do what we do. Yeah. yeah. So I told him we've been training this whole time for this shit. Now it's just time to let it go, put that work in right there. That's what's up, Showcase man. Showcase. Oceanside's doing big things, bro. Big you know what I mean? Oceanside's doing big things. It's a matter of time before we get a world champ. In a matter of time before we get a platinum record, you know what I mean? Right. And, and, I, and I think it's going to be you two to make that happen for the city, man. So, yeah, I think I'm it. honored, bro. Ten years from now, I'm going to look game, back at this interview music. and be like, yeah. You're killing it with the music. I appreciate for you, man. Hey, one day he'll he'll be walking one of your fighters down for a championship fight. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there performing in the Mandalay back. Band, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, it's, it's, it's a matter of time. It, it's going to be good next year for, for the both of us. Yeah. Or oh, all three of us. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully we'll be doing shows too. That's our goal is to start <coughs> doing shows here at the gym. Oh, so we'll be, be having shows here at least every two, three months for the Oceanside mm-hmm. people. We got a champ, bro. I think we would have already had one. Had we had a gym, imagine if there would have been a gym in the Deep Valley, you know what I mean? Or like in different parts of the city, like we would have had a champ already. There's yeah. a lot of people that I know that for sure, like had they had someone like had that discipline or a place where they can to go to. groom their skills. I think because like not... Like Oxnard, Oxnard's had a bunch of champs, and they're very similar to Oceanside. You know what I mean? There's they no just reason. Had gyms. Yeah, there's no reason we can't be the Oxnard of San Diego. You know. Oceanside never had a consistent boxing gym. Yeah. Never. 
just back in the day in the 90s and stuff like that. And then from there, it's just been all San Marcos, Vista, San Marcos, Vista. Like, I drove to Encinitas to train over there for, like, four years. Mm -hmm. yeah. That shit was... Back in the day, it was, like, 30, 45 minutes. Now it's a lot longer, but yeah. that was a bitch itself. Mm -hmm. If it was closer to home, that would have been cake. All the other kids would have did it. You would have been boxing. Yeah. Raul would have been boxing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. For yeah. Real. But, no, man, I, I appreciate both of y'all, man. And, um, man, I'm looking forward to what's next. Yeah. Man, all love. Me too.